Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens, Episode 8, Sleep. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen. And I'm here with my co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, Daddy. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty fine. I mean, I'm a bit moody, as you, as I've already explained to you, but other than that, I'm fine. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get through the podcast without any problems. Let's hope so. So we're going to be talking about sleep today, and uh, sleep is a big thing for teens. Yeah. Um. I guess we should really start off by just sort of going down what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, like we normally do. First, we'll define what sleep deprivation is, because that's really what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Then we're going to talk about some interesting facts about sleep that uh, came out of a sleep study from sleepfoundation.org. Okay. Then we'll talk about some of the causes for lack of sleep in teens. Alrighty. Followed by what are the effects of that lack of sleep on teens. Okay. And then uh, we'll finish that discussion up with how to improve your sleep. Mm-hmm. And then we'll conclude with your closing remarks. Yep. So, let's get right into it. So, what is sleep deprivation? According to the Columbia University Department of Neurology... Sleep deprivation is not a specific disease. It's usually the result of other illnesses, of life circumstances that can cause its own symptoms and poor health outcomes. Sleep deprivation means you're not getting enough sleep. For most adults, the amount of sleep needed for best health is seven to eight hours each night. Do they ever talk about the perfect amount of sleep for teens? Now, not in this particular definition, but in my research, I did find that the ideal hour, the ideal amount of time that teens should have for sleep is between 8 and 10 hours. Okay. So, teens need a little bit more sleep than average adults do. Yeah, kind of makes a bit of sense. Yeah. So, but basically, sleep deprivation, based on this definition is caused by other things it's not a disease in and of itself yeah and i think for the most part when we talk about teens it's less about other illnesses causing sleep deprivation because those other illnesses could be insomnia chronic fatigue various types of things Mm -hmm. but i think when it comes to teens and this kind of plays out from our previous talk about stress it's life circumstances it's it's things that you deal with in life that wind up robbing you of sleep. Let's get into uh, the various facts that we have about sleep. So this came from a study from the sleepfoundation.org. They say sleep is, a, is vital to your well-being as important as the air you breathe, which uh, I think is kind of dramatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, It says it's as important as the water you drink and the food that you eat. It even helps you to eat better and manage stress of being a teen. And I think you'll agree with that, wouldn't you? Yes, I would definitely agree. So a lack of sleep tends to make you more irritable and cause more stress, doesn't it? Yep. Pretty much. If you don't rest your brain, you're going to have more problems with maintaining your stress. They also go on to say that biological sleep patterns shift toward later times for both sleeping and waking during adolescence, meaning it's natural not to be able to fall asleep before 11 p.m. as you get into your teen years. Is that something that you're running into yourself? Yeah, I mean, I just moved into a new room. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I've just been having a harder time going to sleep. And it could be the new surroundings and getting used to it and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think the important takeaway from this is that your body is changing and your body wants to shift to a different sleep pattern. This is also where it says that uh, teens need about 8 to 10 hours of sleep each night to function best. 
But it also goes on to say that most teens don't get enough sleep. Uh, one study said that only 15% of teens polled reported sleeping eight and a half hours on school nights. So that means that's 85% of kids aren't getting enough sleep. Yeah. So do you, can... how many how many hours of sleep do you think you get on average during the school week? Well, I'll think of this way. I normally fall asleep at 12 and I wake up at 6.20. So that's significantly less than the minimum of nine hours that you need. Mm. And that has a tendency of catching up with you throughout the week. And unfortunately, last night I was up till midnight and apparently I woke up at 4.30. And you've been up since 4.30? Yeah. It's hard for me to fall back to sleep normally. Yeah, and that's an issue. And, and you know, as the days grind on with less sleep like that, it catches up to you. Mm -hmm. The study also goes on to say that teens tend to have irregular sleep patterns across the week. They typically stay up late and sleep in late on the weekends, which clearly you didn't do today. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll do that tonight or into tomorrow. But they also go on to say uh, that can affect your biological clock and hurt your sleep quality. So what they're saying is consistency in your sleep pattern. So if... For whatever reason, you don't get enough sleep one night. It's not a really a good idea to try and catch up on that sleep by sleeping late on the weekend. That could have its own issues. They go on to say that when you are sleep deprived, you are as impaired as driving with a blood alcohol content of 0.08%, which is illegal for drivers in most states. Now, that probably doesn't mean too much to you. Mm hmm I would never consider myself sleep deprived, but just hearing that makes me afraid of that one day I'll get sleep deprived. Right. Well, and the thing is, is you know, they compare this to drinking alcohol and try, trying to drive a car, where they basically say if if you go without sleep, it's almost like you're driving drunk if you if you get in a car. Now you don't drive, so that's not an issue, but there's other effects of that impairment on schoolwork, on mood, the fact that you're yawning right now while we're having this discussion, all of these things are impacted by that lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. um, they go on to also say that the amount of rest decreases as youth progress through high school. And that's there's a number of factors. And we'll talk about the factors. The study goes on to say that each hour of lost sleep is associated with a 38% increase in the risk of sadness and hopelessness. So the lack of sleep has an impact emotionally on you as well. Do you find yourself any emotionally compromised on days that you're exceptionally tired? Sometimes, yes. What do you do to compensate for that? Why, what does compensate mean? Like, how do you deal with it? Well, like, you sometimes tell me, like, you've said before... Things that happen now won't matter in your life later on, so I just suck up and deal with it. Okay, I guess that's one way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of things that they found in this study that tend to cause a lack of sleep. And I want to run down some of these and just sort of get your thoughts on it and find out if any of these have an impact on you. Mm-hmm. One is technology use. Now, you've got a cell phone, you've got game systems and TVs and a laptop and all that stuff. Do you think the use of technology has an adverse impact on your sleep schedule? Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it, but yeah, I'm a big user of technology, so I think that would have an impact on it. So is it something where you're just up late at night using it? Or is it like one thing that I find is that if I play video games before I go to bed, I can't fall asleep because my brain is just, it's still in that active mode. Yeah, that's what I have. But on like weekends, sometimes like mommy doesn't tell me like when I go to sleep, I just go to sleep when I can or when I feel like it. And that kind of happened last night. So yeah. And were you up using technology last night? As well? well, I like stopped after a little bit of time, went to 
do a bit of drawing and just like got myself ready for a regular night's sleep. So how long before you actually laid down and go to sleep did you stop using technology? Mm, around 11. And you said you went to bed around 12. So about an hour or so. That's, that's not too bad, I guess. Uh, the next thing that they have in the study as a leading cause is caffeine intake. Now, you don't drink coffee or tea or anything. Do you drink beverages that have caffeine or eat anything that has caffeine? Well, like you said before, well, I don't know if I eat stuff that has caffeine because I, I really don't know um, food that has that caffeine in it, but I do drink diet soda sometimes for dinner. Other times I would drink juice, and yeah, that's all I really think I have for caffeine. I mean, if there are foods that I eat that have caffeine and I didn't know about it, then, well, that's a bonus. Right. So you're saying you drink it for dinner, so you, obviously, you stop consuming it several hours before you go to bed. Pretty much. So the caffeine intake probably isn't an issue for you then? Yeah, even though I do have <laughs> caffeine in my body when I... When and your body tends to metabolize caffeine within a few hours. So as long as you're not drinking it up to the time you go to bed, it shouldn't be a contributing factor. Okay. The next one, however, I suspect is a major contributor during the week for you, and that's a heavy homework load. How does that affect your sleep? Well, a few times I've stayed up late having, like past my bedtime, having to do my homework. And other times, like, it would make me stressful when I had to bring it home. I always got stressed if I had either a project or, like, homework I still had to do after I got back home from school. Yeah, I would think that would probably be more of a contributing factor than actually staying up late. Because I know you've stayed up late a couple times. Mm -hmm. But what I really think it is is, you know, you get stressed out when you have a lot of different things to do. And that stress tends to weigh on you pretty heavily. Yeah, it does. So the next thing that they have, which pretty sure isn't an issue for you, and that's extracurricular activity. You know what they mean by that? Yeah, basically like activities like sports or Girl Scouts or gymna gymnastics. Sorry, I can't pronounce it right. Like basically what kids normally do after school, like when people always say like when I had after I have aftercare, and some of the parents say, "Come on, we have to go to sports or gymnastics or stuff like that." I mean, right. I don't do that stuff though. So none of that's a, a factor for you then. No, not really. No. Okay. So the next thing that they have is an early start time for school. I think right now the grade you're in, it's it's one of the later start times. But you had mentioned just the other day that you'll have to get up earlier for an early start time when you start middle school. Yeah, and I actually still have to get up early now because with you guys going to work early, I have I can't go to school at the normal time, so I have to go to um, morning care and spine care. So that's that's right. So yeah. you are at school what a half hour, forty five minutes earlier than normal. Yeah, and even with my schedule now, I'll probably when I get to middle school, I'll probably have to back my um awake. Your wake time. Yeah, because I need to get to the bus by six thirty, and I wake up at six twenty, and I need like at least thirty to forty minutes to get ready. Right, and the other thing is, you know, when we get to that point, we can look at dropping you off, and you wouldn't have to get up as early. If we drop you off, because actually your new school is going to be sort of on my way to work and mommy's way to work, too. I also learned that they start an hour before my real my um, school does now, which is basically 715. But the advantage of that is you get out earlier, too. Yeah, two point. So there's it, it, it offsets. Yeah. So the last thing that they had under this is a shift in internal biological clock. Uh, your biological clock post puberty, where it affects your circadian rhythm uh, and naturally keeps you up later. Do you know what a circadian rhythm is? No. Good, because I kind of knew what it was, but didn't know the technical term. So I wrote down the definition. Um, circadian rhythms are physical, mental, or behavioral changes that follow a daily cycle. They respond primarily to light and darkness in an organism's environment. 
Sleeping at night and being awake during the day is an example of a light-related circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythms are found in most living things, including animals, plants, and tiny microbes. So basically, your circadian rhythm is how your body works on a clock. Your body needs a certain amount of sleep. You're up a certain amount of time. Your circadian rhythm is basically what that pattern is. And it responds to outside stimuli. Okay. Like for the most part, human beings are awake at night. We're not really nocturnal creatures where we're active at night. So we're, I'm sorry, we're awake during the day. We're not nocturnal at night. Um, so we tend to wake up when the sun comes up and that influence of light on us has a significant influence on our sleeping patterns as well. Your circadian rhythm, you know, as you're going through puberty is going to change and evolve as you go through growth spurts, your body will need more sleep. Your body's going to want to stay up later. It's a lot of different balances that you're dealing with here in addition to all the outside stimuli like schoolwork and so forth. So that sort of sums up where a lot of the lack of sleep comes from in teens. Okay, makes sense. So I think I might have that as well. Yeah, well, we all have it. I mean, a circadian mm -hmm. rhythm is just our natural cycle. And I just wanted to say a few more things that I think also cause my um, lack of sleep. Sure. I'm afraid of having the door open and seeing a dark hallway. Okay. I have this weird fear, which is why I close my door nowadays. Okay. Like, I always have this weird fear. Like, ever since this one night a year ago where we went to that haunted house and, like, I, just, I literally slept with you guys because I was just scared. Right. And that's how I stayed up. Like, I always have this image in my head. Like, a creepy man is, like... A shadowy man is going to be walking into my room, planning to kill me. I don't know how I have that. It just scares me, and I try to keep my door closed, but I still have the thought of it for some reason. Okay, well, thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, some nights where I have, like, a traumatic experience, like, the first time I got my period, I, um... Stayed up pretty much the entire night, hardly got any sleep, affected me the next morning, so yeah. You have a tendency of worrying about things a lot, too, and... I mean, like, that was a pretty big thing that happened then, and, like, bigger things, are like, not, like, homework-related, but, like, things that happened in my life that's going to be with me for the rest of my life have kind of... Put me into a position where I stay up all night. Yeah, and, and, and these are stressors. You know, these are factors that cause stress and stress impacts sleep. So it's understandable. Mm -hmm. yeah, we just have to deal with stress better. That's all. Yeah. So the study goes on to look at what effects lack of sleep has on a person. And the first one, which I'm sure you'll agree with here, is your mood. Uh, sleep deprivation will cause teenagers to be moody, irritable, and cranky. In addition, they will have a difficult time regulating their mood, such as by getting frustrated and upset more easily. I can definitely have a relation to that, and I'm pretty sure you can also relate to that. Well, yes, I can. I think your mood, there's a lot of things that affect your mood. Especially as a teenager, there's a lot of changes that are happening with your body that affect it. Mm -hmm. But lack of sleep, even when I have a lack of sleep, it affects my mood. Which is why Mondays just really don't work for me. Mondays would work much better if I could start them at 10 o'clock. Basically, Mondays suck. Yeah, Mondays suck. So it, it definitely affects your mood. Now, do you find if you get extra sleep, you're in a better mood? Occasionally, yes. Okay, good. But that kind of rarely happens now. But whenever I do get a good sleep, I seem to be in a better mood. Well, that's why we try to do that on the weekends, because you should be in a good mood on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that they talk about is behavior. Uh, they go on to say the teenagers are sleep deprived, who are sleep deprived are also more likely to engage in risk-taking behavior, such as drinking, 
driving fast, and engaging in other dangerous activities. Do you feel a sense of need to be dangerous when you are sleep deprived? Nope, not at all. Do you behave differently when you're sleep deprived? Like, if like I got a good sleep, I was like happy and having fun with my friends. But if I, but if I wasn't, if I didn't get a good sleep, I would just be miserable the entire day, and I'm like, get this day over with. And that's largely attributed to your lack of sleep or other factors? Well, I think sometimes with my lack of sleep, my brain works differently, making me hate more, making me hate things more, another contributing factor to mood. But with behavior, it's basically the effects that my mood have. Okay. So you might be more likely to snap at somebody in, in that kind of behavior. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So number three on their list of effects is your cognitive ability. Uh, inadequate sleep will result in problems with attention, memory, decision-making, reaction time, and creativity, all of which are important to school. Do you feel any of those things are impaired as a result of lack of sleep? Well, sometimes my attention is affected. Like, if I don't get a lot of sleep, like... I mean, I would look at the teacher, I'd listen to them, and then eventually I'd kind of get a little tired of it, and I'd act sort of bored, but I'd still listen to them, because, well, I'm in school and I should do that. Right. I mean, it's not like I lose attention completely, I just feel com- I just feel bored out of nowhere. Yeah, and I, and I encounter the same thing. If I don't get enough sleep, I tend to zone out more than I normally would. I find it hard to concentrate. My memory is worse than it usually is, and you know it's pretty bad to begin with. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say my memory is too changed. I mean, sometimes when I don't get a do- good sleep, I don't really remember too much from the last day, and I just, like, continue repeating. But, like, if I got a good sleep the next, like, the next day, I'd be perfectly fine. Right. Well, the last thing on this list is academic performance. Studies show that teenagers who get less sleep are more apt to get poor grades in school, fall asleep in school, and have school tardiness or absences. Tardiness is lateness for school. I know. So, obviously, you're bringing home straight A's, so any sleep deprivation you have isn't affecting that. Clearly. Um, Do you fall asleep in school? I mean, like I said before, I kind of get bored. I mean, I kind of have my eyes a bit droopy. I've never fallen asleep in school because, well... I don't really sleep that well, right. so it's kind of impossible to begin with. Understood. Yeah, and I don't think it's affecting, and, and this is one of the reasons why I don't think you're really suffering from sleep deprivation. It Everybody does. Nobody gets enough sleep unless you're probably older and retired. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're suffering too much, even though you are yawning once again here. Mm-hmm. So, but thank you. I hope I'm not keeping you awake. Yeah, you're not keeping me awake. Okay. So there are some suggestions on how to sleep better. So there is hope out there for those of you who are suffering from sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first one, and we sort of touched on this, is consistency. They suggest getting up at the same time every day and maintain a consistent sleep schedule. This includes weekends, too. So if you get up at 6 o'clock or 6.30 to go to school every day, you should be getting up at 6.30 and and keeping your body in that cycle. Because when you come out of that, like if you stay up late on the weekends and sleep in late, then it throws that circadian rhythm off. So Mondays, it's even harder for you to get up at your regular time at that point in time. Any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I wake up... Um, the same time every single day of the week. Sometimes if I'm lucky, I wake up slightly earlier, but normally never happens, only like five or ten minutes earlier. Okay. Then, um, on the weekends, either I have the chance to sleep in late or wake up early, so. Well, and that's what they're saying is don't do that. Stick to your regular sleep pattern, because then Monday it'll be easier for you to get up. Mm Mm-hmm. They also suggest taking naps when possible. You're not much of a nap taker anymore, are you? Nope. 
No, neither am I. I mean, I really have no time to take a nap in school, so I pretty much don't bother with naps anymore. No, and what they suggest is that if you get home from school and you have a few minutes, take a nap in the early evening, but don't take it within an hour or two of going to bed because then you're not going to be able to sleep. Uh, Unplug earlier. Turn off your devices. Turn off your TV. Read a book. Do some art. Do something like that. Uh, Unplugging earlier allows your mind to calm. Mm -hmm. Exercise. Yeah, probably not for me. Yeah, not so much. Honestly, if I do exercise, they'll actually have me in a worse position for sleeping. Well, they don't want you to exercise close to bed, but the idea of exercise and burning off that energy and and Yeah, I know. Like, later you get a little tired and eventually you fall asleep. I get the point of that, but still not really big of the idea. Avoid caffeine and sugar at night. Sugar's another one you have to avoid, too. Oh, yeah. We didn't really mention that before with the caffeine, but... Right. So stay away from the chocolates, and, you know, if you're going to do your snack or dessert after dinner, you do it shortly after dinner, don't wait too long, and so forth. Yep. Uh, They do go on to say, don't eat, drink, or exercise within a few hours of bedtime. Don't leave your homework for the last minute, which you never do. That's never an issue for you. No. Try to avoid the TV computer and telephone in the hour before you go to bed Uh, stick to quiet calm activities and your fall asleep much easier if you do the same things every night before you go to sleep you teach your body the signals like a half hour before you go to bed brush your teeth you know pretty much get into your jammies and that sort of starts the internal mechanism in your brain for you to start going into that sleep cycle okay so clearly we're already on that process yeah, you're doing a good portion. They also say, you know, try taking a bath or a shower to relax your body. Well, technically, I do that every time after um, dinner right. uh, every few nights. So They also say try keeping a diary or a to-do list. If you jot down notes before you go to sleep, you'll be less likely to stay awake worrying and stressing. And I know that's something that you've encountered, especially with schoolwork. Mm-hmm where you tend to stress out about projects and stuff, you know, write a little diary. Pretty much. I know mommy does it. She does every night, and it helps her go to sleep. Yeah. So that was just the hints that we had for how to sleep better. So that was all we really had to talk about on sleep. I will turn it over to you, my dear, for your closing remarks. Anyone who is sleep deprived, I would recommend trying some of the topics we just talked about. I would also recommend that if you still are sleep deprived, try to fi- try to find the things that might make you sleep deprived and either stop doing them or find a controlled way to do them. And if you have no problem with sleeping, I would still like to recommend you watching this video and maybe, like, showing it to someone who does have problems sleeping. And if you're like me and don't have sleep deprivation but have a hard time trying to sleep, I would also advise um, trying to get better sleep with all the um, things we had just talked about and to stop doing the things that might cause you to stay awake. All sound advice. I think that'll do it for the podcast this week. I do want to let everyone know that you can reach our podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can visit our main site at www.insightsintothings.com. We are available on YouTube, YouTube. at insightsintothings.com. You can reach us on Twitter now at insights underscore things. Or you can send us an email at comments at insightsintothings.com. And please do check out our other podcast, which is Insights into Entertainment, which is done with, of course, my dad and my mom. All right. Thank you, Madison, again for your time. Another great podcast. Yep, I would have to agree. And we'll talk to everybody next week.